they had an algorithm supposed to deal with fault tolerance. And um, I looked at the algorithm and I said, that wasn't an algorithm to deal with fault tolerance because they assumed that, uh, that there was a leader and if, the, and if the system failed, well, you just get another leader. But, you know, but that's a piece of magic. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you select a leader and select a leader so that uh, you never have two leaders at the same time? And what happens if you have, uh, that's just as difficult as the problem that they claim to solve. So I made the statement that um, in order to get the, uh, fault tolerance or to solve the, the problem that I was trying to solve, uh, you needed to use real time because in the absence of, of real time, there's no way to distinguish between a process that has failed or a process that is just acting slowly. I had this feeling you know, that there was some, some result there. And uh, some number of years later, and I don't remember when it was, when it was published that there was the famous Fisher-Lynch-Patterson result, uh, known as the FLP result, which essentially proved that what I was saying was impossible, was in fact impossible. And the, uh, it was a fantastic, beautiful paper. And you know, they, what they said was much simpler and much more general than anything I was envisioning. So you know, that, you know, that was one of them one of the most, if not the most important papers on, on distributed systems that he ever written. And instead of coming up with a proof, I came up with an algorithm. <laughs> I would sort of say, well, an algorithm to do this has to do this, as that can't work because of something. Well, actually, this could work because of that something, but you do something else and you know, that follow and suddenly say, whoops, there's an algorithm here. <laughs> uh, and what is interesting is the relation with the FLP result. The FLP result says that uh, in an asynchronous system, you can't build something that uh, guarantees that, that consistency in, in reaching consents. That is where you're never going to get two different processes that'll disagree on what value was chosen. But it says you can't guarantee that a, a value eventually will be chosen. And there's People have shown on that uh, this is an explanation, a you know, post facto explanation, not something that goes through my, my mind at the time. But it's been shown that there are random uh, solutions to the problem, which don't guarantee, but guarantee with, with high probability that you'll, you'll with, that is, as time goes on, as the algorithm advances, the probability that you won't have reached a decision gets smaller and smaller. And so um, what I would say that Paxos does is it, it, it's an algorithm that guarantees consistency and it gets termination if you're lucky. And that makes, it sort of gives engineering hints as to what you do so that you have a good probability of, getting, of being lucky and sort of reduces the problem of be, to one of being lucky, which has engineering solutions. But even if you're not lucky, you know, you're, you're not going to lose consistency. And that's what the pa Paxos algorithm uh, does. And that's what I came up, up with. The uh, problem with the paper was, having been successful with a story with the Byzantine generals, I decided to write a story for the Paxos paper. And it was about, the reason it's called the Paxos paper is it's the, the storyline is this is a paper is uh, written by an archeologist of this ancient civilization of Paxos and they had this uh, parliament and uh, this is you know, how they built the parliament. And uh, I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, paper is called the part-time parliament. And so I examples of just the part of the story or how it would be used uh, is, uh, uh, I would have the story and it gave the names of the characters Greek names, or more precisely, their actual names transliterated into Greek. Uh, and 
I had Leo Gibbs's help in uh, in doing that. He he did the trend. I had to add a few non-existent symbols to the <laughs> Greek language to uh, uh, to to get some some phonemes that weren't in in Greek. But uh, and I thought that you know people would be able to you know know you know uh, people who do any kind of mathematics should know enough Greek letters to be able to know you know what an alpha and a beta looks like and so you know I'm reasonably close to if not figuring out the names at least be able to keep you know to, to read them in their heads so they'll be able to understand the the story but apparently that was beyond the, <laughs> the capacity of most of the readers and uh, so that part you know confused them and uh, Oh, I submitted the paper to uh, Tox, I believe, Transactions on Computer Systems. And the referees came back and said, well, this is interesting, not a very important paper, but you know, it would be worth publishing. And he got rid of that, all of that Greek stuff. And I was just annoyed about the uh, uh, lack of humor, <laughs> the referees, and I just let it drop. Uh, Fortunately, uh, and, and almost you know, nobody understood what the paper was about, except for Butler, Butler Lampson. And he understood, he understood its significance is that this gives you a way of implementing, and in a, in a fairly practical way, any system or you know, any, uh, a kernel of a system the, the part that really required that that keeps the system working as a unison uh, rather than keeps the processes from going off in their own way and, and getting chaos and you can use Paxos as the kernel of any distributed system uh, and he went around giving lectures about it well, I thought it was really a terrible paper and at some point uh, when a system was being built at CERC and Ed Lee, he was the, <laughs> okay. Uh, and I think it was Ed Lee who, who was told by somebody that, oh, you should read this paper about Paxos because that's what they need. And he read it and he had no trouble with it. So I feel not so much that, you know, less guilty about it and you know willing to, sh to, sh to put more of the responsibility on the reviewers and the readers. Uh, Ken Berman was the editor of, had become the editor of Tox and he was about to leave his editorship and he said gee it's about time that uh, approximately 10 years after it was submitted. It's the late 90s that, it, that the paper occurred. 